So, today we're going to talk about VR. We're not going to play VR because I don't have the capabilities to do so, nor the money, nor do I want to spend my money on that. But it is a very interesting thing and I've just also seen myself gravitating towards it in the past few few days because of certain things, because of certain reasons. And it's a pretty interesting thing. And we're going to go through the headsets. We're going to go through how it is actually working. I hope this is a good article. I haven't checked it out, but I've seen it. I've headlined read it. And, and yeah. It's hopefully going to be a good one, it's hopefully going to be great, and I'm going to see you after the intro, as always! As always, and if you wonder why I'm actually having a headset on, uh, I actually don't know. I kind of have a feeling that it is setting me to a space that that is a tiny little bit better for me to record in, since I don't, don't just hear myself that clearly, and also don't just hear all the other things that are around me that clearly, even though this is like a 20 bucks uh, headset and stuff, so it's really shitty, and you, you can tell that, you really can. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that being said, hello, welcome back to the next episode of the self to Wellmore Taxis podcast, and I'm really, really happy to be here and record this episode. And before I even want to go through that, I do want to talk just really, really quickly about something you can just also skip the next two minutes or something, so that, you don't, uh, that you're going to just get right to what the episode's actually all about. But the thing is, yesterday I thought... Why am I actually not doing things? Why am I actually not talking about some things that I'm really into at this point in time? Which is, uh, for example, VR. You know, why am I not talking about this? Like, I always think that I just want to provide a lot of value. And I really still want to do that, don't get me wrong. But I also think that, okay, you know, I just really want to do some things that I that I really want to do. And then I just, I don't know, gravitate towards going through some articles and through some some things that I'm kind of semi-interested in and, and reading through it. And I don't, just don't know anything about it. And then I thought, like, why just don't I go through some VR stuff? Because it's also cool. It's also interesting. So why shouldn't I? And this is what I'm going to do, go through today. And this is what we're going to do today. And I'm really happy to do that. And I'm also really happy that I'm just also going to do that because, you know, it is what it is. So I think uh, we're actually going to start with how the whole stuff is working. And I've actually found a How Stuff Works article, which is basically the site that we've went through just a couple of times the past week, I would say. This is a really short article and I really tremendously enjoyed that because, or is it actually two-paged? It is two-paged. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I also think that there's actually multiple pages. So it might be the case that this episode is a little bit of a longer one because I'm going to read this article because as I, as you can see, I, I haven't picked out something. But yeah, anyway, so how virtual reality works. A virtual reality cave display projecting images onto the floor, walls and ceiling to provide full immersion. So it seems also to be the case that even though like... As I'm thinking about it, if you're just having a headset on, you don't give a fuck about just the whole projectory thing there. But if you don't have one, then it is probably quite a cool thing, even though, I mean, you can just really tell that it is just a wall. So it, it might also not be that immersive, I would say, but yeah. So what do you think of when you hear the word, the word virtual reality or VR? Do you imagine someone wearing a clunky helmet attached to a computer with a thick cable? And yeah, this actually has been the case because if we go back in, and I found a, another article there actually as well, if we go back in time, there were virtual virtual reality glasses or things back in 1985 as NASA actually did it. And they look really, really similar. They look really similar to what we're doing at this point in time or what we're having at this point in time, which is something that's pretty interesting and a pretty wild thing as well. And they actually say that it can be dated back to 1970 and also just before actually, but this is not just real virtual reality. And of course, we're going to have, like, this is what they've been talking about, like a really big fucking helmet and a thick cable going into a computer and this is your fucking virtual reality thing and and such things. And, and I think also bigger, 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 bigger constructions for the military and stuff so that it is even more immersive with the capabilities we had back in the days and stuff. But yeah, nowadays it looks a little bit different and it also is a little tiny bit different. This is, by the way, a pretty cool thing. Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin previewing the destination. Mars VR experience at the Kennedy Space Center visitor complex in 2016. It's a pretty nice thing. Pretty nice thing that he's doing that. But something else that also just caught my eye was the, uh, um, the explanation, I would say. Maybe it's a definition. I don't really know. Virtual reality is a simulated experience that can be similar, that can be similar or completely different from the real world. Applications of virtual reality can include entertainment, so video games, and educational purposes, uh, i.e. medical or military training. Other distinct types of VR-style technology include augmented reality and mixed reality. Is this actually a type of VR? I thought AR and VR is like just... I mean, they have similarities, 
but it's not the same thing. Nor is it like just one of the two things is just part of the other thing or something. But I just really thought it is funny that they say it is it's a simulation or a simulated experience that can be similar or completely different from the real world. And I gotta have to say, like most often it is, well, yeah, mm, mm. I thought about games. And when it is about games, then it is probably gonna be just even though, like, yeah, mm, never mind. It's good. <laughs> It's good, never mind. But actually coming back to the original article that I've begun going through. Do visions of crudely, uh, crudely rendered whatever haunt you? Do you think of Neo and Morpheus traipsing about the Matrix? Or do you wince win at the term wishing it would just go away? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> if the last applies to you, you likely, uh, you're likely a computer scientist or engineer, many of whom now avoids the words, the words virtual reality even while the work on technologies most of us associate with VR. Today, you're more likely to hear someone use the words virtual environment, which is VE, to refer to what the public knows as virtual reality. We'll use the terms interchangeably in this article, which is good, which is a nice thing, which uh, is amazing. Naming discrepancies aside, the concept remains the same. Using computer technology to create a simulated three-dimensional world that a user can manipulate and explore while feeling as if he or she actually were in that world. Scientists, theorists, and engineers have designed dozens of these devices and applications to achieve this goal. Opinions differ on what actually consists a true VR experience, but in general, it should include three-dimensional dimensional images appear to be life-sized from the perspective of the user, and the ability to track a user's motion, particularly his hat or sh or her hat and eye movements, and correspondingly adjust the images on the user's display to reflect the change in perspective. In this article, we look at the defining characteristics of VR, some of the technology used in VR systems, and a few of its applications, some concerns about virtual reality, and a brief history of the discipline. In the next section, we'll look at how experts define virtual environments, starting with immersion. I don't know if I'm just gonna go through everything, since I don't like reading that much. Virtual reality, immersion. Like, there's different ways. You know, let's actually skip that. Let's actually skip that. The virtual reality environment. Real virtual objects doing for a swim. Passive haptics are one way VE de developers have tried to enhance interactivity. Passive haptics are real objects in physical space that are mapped to virtual objects in a virtual space. Users wear an HMD or similar portable display while in the physical space when they look toward the physical object they'll see the virtual representation of in the display. Oh, I see. So it is a real thing but you just have uh, well, well, this, by the way, is something that I that I think about when I'm just thinking about Google Glasses and stuff, you know, where you actually, which I think is actually augmented reality rather than anything else, that you actually see additional information f to to whatever to whatever you're seeing in the real world and stuff, uh, which is also a cool thing. Like, and probably also there's a lot of applications that we can use it for virtual reality interactivity and stuff. I actually want to just see how it is kind of working. The virtual reality headset, which is probably like the one that we are most often referring to and or thinking about, I would say. And and, and, and virtual reality games. I kind of have a feeling that that we're not gonna be so happy with this article. At least I'm not gonna be that happy with this article. Well, yeah. You know. Anyway, let's actually skip that. It is. I thought about. Well, maybe there's gonna be virtual reality challenges and concerns. I do wonder about the concerns, but I don't, because I don't see anything. In effect, there is a fear that VE entertainment systems could breed a generation of sociopaths. What the fuck? <laughs> Alice Aaron is worried about desensitization, but do warn that convincing VE experiences could lead to a kind of cyber addiction. There have been several news stories of gamers neglecting their lives, their real lives for their online in-game presence. Engaging virtual environments could potentially be more addictive. Another emerging concern involves criminal acts. In the virtual world, defining acts such as murderer, or sex crimes has been problematic. At what point can authorities charge a person with a real crime for actions within a virtual environment? What the fuck? I mean, I mean, th th this is, and I'm just hopefully not gonna fuck anybody by saying that or get into trouble, but I think this is just one of these things that some people that really don't think about it or kind of have to think about it in terms of people that make the law, people that just have an opinion on just some things that they just don't know any fucking thing about and whatnot, because... I mean, they're literally saying that, um, I hope, you know, I'm not complaining about that. 
but it's it's a little bit of an interesting thing like you're doing a crime in the virtual world how the fuck should i should it reflect onto the real world they say it is virtual i know it's virtual of course if i for example if i'm in a chat and i just i don't know say something to somebody or I just uh, hack them or some bullshit like that or some other things that clearly are criminal, then it's something different. And of course, I might also be able to do this in VR with chats in particular and, and all those things, but, but yeah. or I've just understood it in the wrong way. Could also be the case. Like, I don't fucking know. But let's see. Let's see. Virtual reality history. It's actually a really good article. I could have also just gone through that one. Virtual reality development. A boom display used by NASA to emulate space. Yeah, I think we have, we have just been doing this for quite some time, to be honest. But yeah, you know, this is actually the article. So let's actually head through the devices that we are at this point in time in terms of headsets that are made for the public as well, what we are having at this point in time. And it is actually pretty interesting that such a lot of... It's actually really small... Well, anyway, let's go through it in that way. Is there, like, also just the regular, quote-unquote, list? Oh, never mind. So... Uh, we are, for example, having the Nintendo Labo, or Labo, however you're actually pronouncing it, Toy-Con Veridicate for Nintendo Switch, which uh, I didn't actually know that there is a VR headset included there, but uh, with that tax test or in the test, it's it's actually not been that bad, to be honest. Then, of course, the Oculus Quest from Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, which is probably including with the Oculus Quest the, um, the two most, quote-unquote, important ones and or... Um, dominant ones maybe then the nintendo switch yeah okay the oculus go which is as far as i've seen just uh oculus quest just cheaper for 200 bucks then the oculus rift s the sony playstation vr then htc vive cosmos doesn't require external sensors improved motion controls sharp display large software ah yeah of course because the uh, htc vive normally is having just some I think it's not, yeah, they say it's, it's motion sensors. I thought about cameras, but they're motion sensors. And you just have to uh, have to have them in your room to being able to use the whole thing. And and I think, first of all, because of that, it works pretty fine and it works pretty good. And second of all, you know, of course, it is a little bit more expensive because you need these things. But, you know, the new one is probably not going to be that much cheaper. Then we're actually also having the HTC Vive Pro which is also kind of different. And then we're also having the Lenovo Mirage solely with Daydream, which I think is by Google, Google Daydream, as far as I remember. And yeah, I can't actually show you the um, the thing there. I actually have to make it a little tiny bit bigger, but it's going to be fine. It is going to be fine because I want to have it like this. Sure. Is this something that you can see? Yeah, you can see it quite good. I'm also going to zoom in. So on the first place, we're actually having the Oculus Quest with 499 pounds, uh, which is going to turn out to more than 500, I guess, maybe even 600. I'm not quite sure. Euros and even dollars. And something that I've seen, first of all, uh, the, the, has some, some, some differences, kind of, is the resolution. For example, the Oculus Quest is having 1440 by 1440 10 uh, by, by 1600, whereas, let's just take the Nintendo Labo, it's having 1280 by 720, which is um, 1080, no, it's not 1080p, it's 720p, so it's, it's definitely, definitely, definitely a lower resolution. Then, something that I've also seen is that the refresh rate of these displays are also different, whereas the uh, PlayStation VR is having 120 hertz, the uh, Oculus Quest is only, quote-unquote, having 72 and the HTC Vive is actually having 90 hertz, which is, by the way, also something that we're seeing in f smartphones at this point of time, which is a cool thing because they seem to be snappier. I haven't checked it out on my own, but I've only just seen videos of it. And um, they seem to be snappier. They seem to be quite um, quite faster because of the display. But of course, you also need a good processor to being able to power that display, this higher refresh rate display. So it's going to be smoother in the end. Everything is going to be smoother. Everything is going to be a bit different. And people also said that if you're just on this 90 hertz display thing, that you're not going to be able to get back. And and yesterday I've actually also seen a video there's, that there is also a 144 hertz display smartphone. But of course, you know, uh, someday it's going to be a little bit crazy and, and we don't actually need it. But, but of course, there's also some other drawbacks and or... Yeah, drawbacks, if you will, that, for example, the Nintendo Labo just obviously only can play, like, uh, Nintendo games or Nintendo Switch games, whereas the PlayStation 4 thing is only able to just be used for PlayStation 4 games. HTC Vive with Steam games 
And and I'm actually not quite sure about Oculus, what this is all about. I know whether this is like, or if it can be used for everything. Let's actually see. Or is it like, no, thank you. Lowest price. I don't care. Let's actually have a look really quickly. What does it mean, tethered headsets? But yeah, of course, as I'm just also seeing there in this uh, little review there, they say that, and it is gone. Thank you. <laughs> that uh, I wasn't, I am, I am really not quite sure what it was. But they said that because uh, because of the display and because of all the motion sensors, it's probably going to be, or it's probably been the HTC Vive, you also need to have a good computer. Which, of course, like, if if you're just also trying to record it and stuff, like, you're really going to have a pretty, pretty, pretty good computer for being able to do so. Because it actually takes really a lot of... Um, processing power to do so as i've actually also yesterday seen like yesterday i've seen a video about uh half-life alex which is by the way a pretty cool game and this is actually also why i've gone to the whole vr thing and why i've then thought about like it's actually pretty cool you know and it's actually a really important thing maybe also in the future because as we have seen like there's different simulations that you can do with it. there's different things that you can do with it but and um, what I've seen is that the playable area is just really detailed, like it's a really good game and also the art direction is really smooth and really nice and really whatever. It's, uh, in general, as I've also seen then, um, it's actually got a 10 out of 10 on Steam and 92% on PC Gamer. So it is actually a really good game. And I've also seen a Let's Play of it, so not the whole one because it's, it's a really long one and stuff. So I didn't, didn't take this amount of time out of my my quote-unquote, not quote-unquote life, but uh, out of my life. But um, what I've seen was really cool and really impressive and really amazingly detailed from a design perspective, from the levels. But what I want to say is that the playable area is really detailed and nice and gorgeous and amazing. But if you just step out a little bit through mods, I guess it's been, then you can see like everything has to be just so perfectly optimized, like just so optimized that it is running smoothly and just that you don't need, a, I don't know, a server for playing the fucking shit. And, and, and yeah, I think, I mean, you're having more capabilities, like there's more ways to do some things and, and, and stuff like, I think, but so, so see, for me, for me, it makes sense, you know, for me, it makes sense. And therefore we just really need to have good optimization for those games. And as I'm just seeing Half-Life Alex is only quote unquote costing 60 bucks. Which is, I think, quite nice, even though I don't know what the HTC Wife is costing because they... HTC Wife... Let's go for the Pro. Let's see what the Pro is all about. Let's see on the Wife site. I've also just uh, thought about talking about some, some other games that I've seen. I mean, like... <coughs> Sorry. I mean, um, it is something. It's 679 euros. And originally this 879 euros. Nearly a thousand bucks. And free delivery. Well, I think... You can somehow expect it. Like, if you're just having to pay so much for this fucking shit, like, of course. And two, three months of unlimited VR with Wineport Infinity. Okay. Cool. VR Awards 2018 winner. VR headset of the year. I'm missing it. I mean, it looks impressive. It looks really cool. It looks just amazing. And you also have a headset with it. I don't know how good it is. I don't know if you can actually also unplug it or some shit. If this is also something that works. But, but I mean, yeah. As I've seen, like... A lot of people are using it. Up to 100 square meters. Teleport around boundless virtual world sitting at desk or create dedicated room scale or create a dedicated room scale play area where you can physically walk around. Steam VR tracking provides the best experience possible. And stuff. And blee blah bloop. Like it is pretty ex expensive and expressive. Uh, and impressive, of course. The field of view is a 110 degrees. What is the human eye having? Isn't it like... 160 or something human eye field of view i wonder 120 degrees of arc yeah 160 is a little bit too much 180 would be like just insane but this actually having 110 is pretty impressive therefore i assume like i really actually don't know <laughs> but i think it is and there you can also see like the motion sensors in the background the two cubes there and stuff it's a pretty cool thing, but let's actually see what the Cosmos, what this is all about. I think it is more expensive. Cosmos Elite, Cosmos. Okay, uh, the Cosmos Elite is 999, whereas the Cosmos is 829. So it is actually a little tiny bit cheaper than the other one. But I still wonder what the whole difference there is. 
The Vive Cosmos series is the world's first PC VR system with a suite of modular options for a wide range of VR applications. It also offers the highest Vive visual resolution to date. Okay, I actually wanna, can I just, there's also the Cosmos Play, which is somehow, which is not having a headset, as far as I can tell there. Get details, I wanna have details, please. Please get me some fucking details. Own your VR world. Play video. No, I don't want to play the video. Refined inside out tracking. Unmatched graphics quality. Oh, it's actually really having a good resolution with two, 2880 by 1700, which is, I guess, 2K around, around 2K or something, I guess, which really is good. Oh, I thought there's actually also such a spec list as I've seen it. Get details. Do I have to get just so many details? I want to have all the details, please. In the impeccably designed for VR versatility. Refined inside-out tracking. Six camera sensors at the latest software optimization enhance inside-out tracking accuracy. Accuracy, I'm sorry. Unmatched graphics quality. Quick and easy setup. Minimal interruptions and easy fit. Take control with the controllers. Wireless adapter. Untethered virtual reality is here. Pretty cool thing, even though I wonder if it is heavy and stuff. You know, there's also not that of a big list there. And I can actually get there everywhere more details, but I just... Would like to have like a list like any other one but yeah anyway do i have something else that i want to talk about yeah the walking dead saints and sinners yesterday i've also seen a video yesterday's actually been a pretty heavy video day kind of was it actually i'm actually not quite sure but this is what i've seen yesterday and i think this is uh pretty cool like they have done a pretty good job at that as i was able to see with a lot of cool um, implications of the of, of sound actually as well because if you turn on a specific option or a specific feature of the of the game you can be heard by the zombies which means that if you just make noise and this is going to be picked up by microphones then they are going to hear that of course if you're making a let's play which the person is uh, was also saying um, that that was playing. It, it's it's not that of a good thing because if you're always talking and you're always gonna get fucked then it's, it's not such a cool thing but i've also just found another list of possibilities that we're having with we are so for example we're having virtual reality in the military which is something that we've been talking about before but i've actually seen a construction with like a parachute and stuff like pretty cool then healthcare of course learning so as they are probably also gonna say in education yes i mean learning stuff and and being able to see how things are really working this is insanely good this is an insane thing really amazing thing because especially when it is about some technical things especially if it is about architecture and stuff like this is an amazing thing for those people because if you're building something if you're making something or if you're just willing to try to understand to how this is actually working then it is always a good thing to see how it is working you know also if it is about just a clock the clockwork thing like just seeing how the clock actually is working, this is amazing. It's a pretty fancy thing, a pretty cool thing. Then fashion, of course, business, yeah, of course, sport, scientific visualization, construction, programming languages. I'm actually not quite sure what they think about when they talk about programming languages. Oh, yeah, of course, I know it's good for them as well. Then reality and heritage. Actually, pretty cool thing. I you know if you just want to, I don't know, meet your grandma and stuff, then you just hop into the virtual space and you're kind of able to see her through the lenses. Uh, in terms of like if she's living just somewhere and you're living somewhere, that this is probably also uh, an application for that. Movies, I guess, is going to be a huge thing. Having VR, it's actually a VR movie. VR movie. Virtual real. Okay, we, they say Ready Player One. Crow, the Legend VR 360 animated movie. But of, but of the Max submersive VR experiences. So there might be some, I don't know. Not able. Virtual reality theater for video on demand by Cinemore. Yeah. I hope and and I hope you've kind of liked this episode. It's been a little bit of a different one. Um, we are actually already at 27 minutes. I also hope that it's been kind of interesting and kind of also, um, how should I say, like informational or something. I hope, I really do hope, but yeah, I am probably going to see you the next time, so I wish you gonna, I wish you the best health, health, happiness, and also success, and also hope that you're going to remind yourself, and you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy, basically means just being a nice version, a nice person, and also a nice version of your person, as, as which you're then going to be remembered for, if this makes sense, the, the whole sentence, I think, didn't make any sense, but yeah, anyway, the three other questions that I'm having for you are, 
Why are you here? What are you trying to change? And what is also bothering you the most? Because these three questions might show you your purpose and hopefully going to do that and uh, maybe even going to show you a business idea. So yeah, one point that I want to talk about is that you don't need a VR headset. You don't need to buy one. Uh, in the future, they're probably going to be cheaper. You don't just need it right now. We don't always need things right now. Unless you can, and unless the money that you might be spending on that is not really hurting you, which is probably not going to be the case for such a lot of people because it's pretty expensive. Like a thousand bucks for just a headset alone without a computer and without the game and without anything, it's, it's really heavily expensive for private use. Maybe you have a company, maybe there's some tax things you can do with that. Um, but yeah, I'll hopefully going to see it next time. And I hope it's kind of been a good video because I can't fucking tell. I'm going to see you.